to Andy and Dave Daly right here on the Muskegon Channel. I'm Andy O'Reilly. There's Dave Cackley. Uh, I would like to start off today with an announcement. Go ahead. Shoot. Are you ready? Go ahead. This is a uh, day of um, reverence. It's a day of excitement. It's a day of joy. And it's a day of thankfulness. Okay. Um, and thankfulness goes to you, uh, in, in part, and the audience, because overnight, to last night, we topped 100,000 views. Awesome! Can you believe that? All right. Uh, actually, I can. 100,000, really man. Yeah. And think that's about it. that. That's great. Because that's great. there's 100,000 that have, that have watched this thing, according to the mm-hmm. website, and that's since we moved to this website. That was, right. you know, before, and we've got others that were there before mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But I want to I wanna point out a few things. First and foremost, you. Um, we have become brothers if oh if absolutely you, over life you know we have oh, been no through, we've been through everything that life has mm-hmm. to offer together um when we got this going to do the digital end of things instead of radio uh, you work for free until the money came mm-hmm. along enough to pay e- and even yeah. then it's not enough and i know that but it's something and you hung in there until it came and that means the world um, oh of course man that's commitment and that's that's uh that's a big deal. Um, we have weathered every ass wipe that has tried to break <laughs> us up. We have been successful yeah. on more than one platform. And if you think about this little chat back and forth being seen a hundred thousand times and the ads mm-hmm. that run down there, that's two hundred thousand views on their ads. That's very cool. And to stop and that's think very cool about what we charge compared to what the bigger companies charge Mm -hmm. and the actual impact that we have compared to them Mm -hmm. it's night and day and i don't make a i don't make a um habit of bragging or talking a lot about um what we do and how it hits but a hundred thousand is a big freaking number and two hundred thousand absolutely that's a lot um it is it's for a pittance we we mm-hmm. don't try to go for the jugular when it comes to money and it, it's an amazing day to me i i, I really it, it's a lot even for me to process so well, man, you started the whole thing you're the one that took you're the one that that took a chance and bet on yourself and that's something that i don't think Most people, and and not even don't think, I know this to be true. Most people don't have the balls to do it. Most people are like, now I'm going to stay in this safe space where I'm used to everything. And and I'm as guilty of that as anybody. So that's why I can step outside myself and appreciate those like yourself who do take chances and do create something that's very cool and great and benefits their community. And I just think, Again, this is all, I, I mean, you like, you, you're one of these, you, you don't like the spot, you kind of, you, you you push credit off, but it really does go to you, especially, I mean, because this is what people, do, I don't think, realize about you, and I mean this, you genuinely care about your community. There are people who pay lip service to that, yeah. who will talk about that, but it's not really there. With you, and I know this, it's not really there because initially when you would you would talk about this guy i didn't really get it i wasn't 100 percent it but then the, the more i got to know you and the more i saw how you in how invested you really were um it's it's really it really is inspiring man and i you know i usually give you shit all the time well, we give each other shit that's the job well, yeah yeah. Well, yeah that's what we do but yeah i i will i will have this brief moment of sincerity and say yeah. i'm proud of you you've, well, thanks, you've done, you've done and- well You know that that sincerity for this community comes from everything they've given me, right? Oh, yeah. I I came here Mm -hmm. after a failed suicide attempt, a failed marriage, and I figured I would just blend in and drink myself to death. I I literally had no aspirations other than that. And the second part of it that really has to be uh, mentioned on my end is Cindy Briggs. Um, Oh, yeah. She's the one that said, you can do anything you want. Go do it. And to think that this began with a GoPro Mm -hmm. and a a tripod. Yeah, I remember that. that. Oh, Mm -hmm. my God. Tripod this big that would tip over. Yeah. Um, 
and to know what we're to know that we've got entries in for four Emmy Awards this year. Mm-hmm. Um, we're it, it, it hundred thousand views on this back and forth, and it, it's just really um, it it's a it's a it's a day to celebrate. So I'm very uh, cool. I'm very thankful. I I appreciate you. I love you like a brother, and um, I wouldn't change a thing. I I really wouldn't. Uh, right back at you. I, I I got a question though. Should, should there answer. be like a shouldn't there shouldn't there be like a cake or something? I'll see to should that. Should you have like a cake? Yeah. Like a chocolate cake with a 100k on it or something. I'm just or at least a cupcake or How something. How about a star it's, crunch? You don't know. <laughs> Good lord. Why Best you gotta ru- right now. just you just ruined the moment. <laughs> It's all tainted now. Way to go. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll go get a cake Why tonight. crap all over your achievement. I'll go get a cake tonight, <laughs> today, and I'll eat it tonight, and I'll think of you. All right, fine. All I right. appreciate that. Well, 100,000. Uh, yeah. Here's a salute to everybody out there that helped us make it happen, and I'm going to tell you, that audience, too, man. Yeah. Think about that audience and where they followed us. Yeah, absolutely. From Muskegon to that crap little pea shooter station in Grand Rapids. Mm. Where, by the way, we raised one hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars for the veterans' home in, yeah, that was in under cool. a year. Um, yeah, that was <laughs> nobody else does that. And, I, and I've honestly, I <clears throat> I have bear no ill will. I have no uh, bitter feelings towards anybody. I don't either. Um, I just don't. And that's again, everybody's got their own things. Everybody's wired the way they're wired, and uh, I, you they know view what? things how they view them and actually the grand rapid station when we went yeah. back to that when he came in and let us go i'm like thank god i don't have to drive I over here anymore <laughs> <laughs> i remember and I, I remember it happening and having this is what was weird and how you know you were probably in the wrong place it's just i didn't have any feeling about it right it wasn't you know how like uh because i've been fired before yeah and had you have feeling like i didn't have any kind of like, oh, well, you, you know, this is business. Do you remember I told you that day? Didn't... Yeah, you did. I did. Yeah, you did. And then I could it, smell you, it. You, you, you I could see the death. I could see it on that rust guy's face. Yeah. I'm like, oh boy. So, well, you know, yeah. it's okay. Bygones. No right. worries. I, I, and I'm not worried about it. I'm not at all. You know, mm-hmm. although I will say it was funny because um, that guy that let us go, mm-hmm. I ran into him a couple years later up at the Sandy Corley run. Jackal mm-hmm. was up there playing. So I go back to see Jesse Dupree and say hi and all that stuff. And here he sits on the bus. And I, w- I walk on to Dupree's bus. Big deal. You know, it's mm-hmm. here sits that guy that let us go. And he's like this. And I'm like, dude, really? Like, I, yeah, I'm going to no, kick yeah, your ass at a biker bike yeah. rally. <laughs> and it's just, it was a, it was a numbers game. You know, there was nothing he was going to, it was, I, I got to do this. And I, I, you know stupid. what? Those are things. Those are, you know, in, and you gotta feel like if you're in management and and that's part of your job is to ax people. I've got a lot. I do have sympathy and some empathy for people who, who are yeah. put in that position and they got to make a decision whether or not they would have or wouldn't have or agree with it or disagree with it. Uh, hey, you gotta you. The problem is this going in another direction. Whatever. The problem is this. It's not their decision. It's some spreadsheet mm-hmm. somewhere. Yeah, and, and it just is the yeah. cuts. It, it, that's the problem. Right. The the, the managers around here don't have mm-hmm. a say, and right. if they did, it would make a hell of a lot better industry. So, it, yeah, it would. It, yeah. it definitely would. Uh, at the same time, you know, you, you you adjust you adjust to change, and and that's what had to be done. You adjust and, uh, to change, uh, and the managers are. that should make the proper decisions are running things like the Muskegon Channel, and they're being wildly there you successful. Go. Thank you. There you go. All right. All right. So there you have Ready it. To do this. Let's do it. Let's get into it. President Biden says the three objects shot down over North America last weekend were not spy balloons. U.S. military still working to recover those objects. The president uh, claims that nothing currently suggests the balloons were related to China's, China's surveillance program or surveillance from other countries. Nothing to see here. Mm-hmm. Again, And it doesn't really matter to me no. one way or the other. We spy, they spy, everybody spies on everybody everything's being listened to looked at there's a record of everything now uh it, it, it just how it is but uh, do you do you trust what comes I, I don't trust what comes out of anybody's mouth from a leadership perspective anymore anyway so i always is- assume i always assume yeah. until proven otherwise that i'm being lied to and that's you know again 
Well, here, here's a fun fine. thing to do. I don't care. If you remember, uh, way back when NASA was getting started, mm -hmm. look up the secret space program back then. Mm. Because there were two space programs. Yes, there were. There, there were the space. There was the space program we all saw, with mm. you know the the seven and you know oh my god it was great, but then there was also a secret space program, that the astronauts had blue suits. They even had a different color suit to send those guys up in space to spy, and mm. um, it, it 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 went on. It's still not really course, yeah. overly disclosed. But no, if, because if you dig a little bit, you can find right. the the secret space program from the '60s, and mm -hmm. you'll uh, you'll see there was two. That's one of the things I, I do love about getting older is is being inter It's it's fun to be interested in that stuff just because yep. it doesn't it doesn't really it, do, it doesn't ultimately matter. I mean, this is stuff that was done or not done, whatever it was. Yep. Um, and it's just it's interesting to see how how it was viewed then. It wasn't and how it's viewed. Yeah, well, that, but but, but like situations and things that right. happen, things where we were we were told one thing and it ended up, ended up being something completely the opposite. Right. And everybody, you know, the journal, everybody, the powers that be, all were all were uh, towing the same line, and we were being lied to, and and, and we didn't know it, or maybe right. some of us did. I, I don't know now. Well, now it's it's interesting. It's interesting now that the dichotomy that exists what, now the it, it's off. The covers off. The emperor has no clothes, and we all know we all know it's all bullshit. And we're I think we're getting more comfortable. I don't know if we should be comfortable with it, but it feels like we're getting more comfortable with it. I'm gonna tell you I, what, again, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's you, an you can thing. rewind history back to mm -hmm. Eisenhower, and he mm -hmm. told us. Oh. He, he came military right out and said it about the military industrial mm -hmm. complex. And that's mm -hmm. where all the secrets and lies are held. And it doesn't matter who's in power. Nope. Because they don't know what, people, because people dig in and if they're, if their team is in power, yep. they completely do a 180. Oh, my guy wouldn't lie to us. Oh, of course. You know, Trump wouldn't lie to us. Biden wouldn't lie to us. They're all lying and they're doing it all the time. And and sometimes with good reason, other times to save face, other yep. times just yep. because, you know, whatever the reason may be. There you have it. And it's just, it's, it's, it's fascinating just as somebody who just likes to observe things just to, to kind of watch it and just shake my head and go, okay, this is where yeah. we are. What else is going on? The family of Bruce Willis says the actor is suffering from dementia. Willis has been dealing with cognitive issues for the past few years. While there are no treatments, the family says it's relieved to finally have a diagnosis. Bruce Willis is 67 years old. It's sad, but it's it's also one of those things that, you know, you, you, I, I think about Bruce Willis. To me, Bruce Willis is still, a lot of people think Die Hard. I still think the show Moonlighting yeah. on ABC <laughs> Yep. And how kind of groundbreaking and cool it was that a great series show. was. Bruce Willis, Sybil Shepherd, Booger from uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Booger was, in was it. great. Yeah, it was, and that was the first one where he would like he would like break break the fourth wall and kind of talk to the audience or or make reference to it being a TV. It was a it was really 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 good. It was great, and he was so good in it. And uh, another, by the way, another uh, the, like the last, I think, really good movie he did. It got kind of mixed reviews, but I thought it was really good. It was a, a remake. I believe it was a remake of Death Wish, the old Charles Bronson movie where mm. he plays a he plays a surgeon and like his his family gets attacked. And he comes up like a vigil. It was like a vigilante justice thing mm. it was a few years back, just like maybe 2015 or so. It was pretty. It was good. Yeah. It was good. It was a it was a fun it was a fun watch. And because I, I, I always find vigilantes fascinating whether i agree or disagree it's just right. you kind of root for them oh yeah because they're they're taking care of the people that you know the authorities can't or are have their kind of hands tied and it's my uh, favorite it's my favorite memory of moonlighting was agnes de pesto oh and mr pesto i don't yes. tell you why i had an aunt darcy god rest her soul mm -hmm. who was just um she was the insertion of an angel into our family mm -hmm. um I come from a family of boilermakers. We're Irish. We're loud, mm -hmm. crass. We give each other yes. a finger. If a camera comes out, 
it, everybody's finger goes up. You get the uh -huh. Irish people. Right. Um, Darcy married my Uncle Brian, and how she fit into this gang of complete morons is beyond me. But everybody gives nicknames, right? Every mm -hmm. one of my uncles had a nickname growing up. I, I've been known as Androop for most of my life because, you know, Droop, Androop, Droopy, mm -hmm. you know, that's whatever. Yeah. She was Agnes Dars Pesto. <laughs> so we called her <laughs> Agnes Dars Pesto. <laughs> and what a great memory. I miss I love, you know, and there's probably like five people watching who get this reference, but it was just that I, I know because I could, I, I loved that character on mm -hmm. that show. It was so, it was so different and just kooky and weird and funny and endearing. It's yeah. one of those, yeah, it's just, God. It's, and this is the, the, the one of the, you know, kind of sad things about aging. You think back on your childhood or your teenage years and, and these people are, are getting old. These yeah. people are like, you and I are old, but we're kind of young old. It's like, cause we're not middle age. We're past middle age cause we're 50 plus now. But that's kind of like 50 is like the beginning of being old. And then you become a different kind of old once. I think once you hit 70, those are like the golden years. There you go. Uh, so we're still we're still a couple of decades away from golden or a little less than two decades away from our golden years. But it's 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 just a, a, a weird position to be in because I don't know that I don't know. And maybe we've I think we have talked about this before. I, I don't know that our generation was prepared to be 50 years old. Dude, I, I just think I lived to be 25. Through. Yeah. Dude, and, and here I sit at 52 going, holy shit, what's next? How am I going to pay for that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's weird thing. It's like you look at things like, I, I don't know how I'm existing in the space I'm existing. It's a weird, I don't, everything <laughs> seems strange. I, I You feel out of place. It's weird because we're in that, we're in that age range where you're, you kind of just don't fit. You're either with, you're either around people who are way younger or way older yeah. and you're just kind of, I feel like you just kind of like floating around the periphery of life. And I'll tell you the other it's thing that you get. Interesting place to be. The other thing that you get clear as a bell mm -hmm. is why your dad was such a dick when he was 52. Oh yes. <laughs> I understand. Hey, why dad, I get it now. <laughs> Here's a beer. <laughs> Sorry. I was a dick when you yeah. were a dick. <laughs> So my dad, my dad was interesting like that because he would, he had a very long fuse. Nothing like the, the thing with him was <clears throat> it, he would handle terrible, horrible, awful things really, really calm and like didn't make things bigger than they were. But if the lawnmower wasn't working right, yep. he was swearing up a <laughs> storm left and right. His hat would be askew. God damn it. And you know, like... It was just, it was interesting. And then he, but he'd be very like, David, sometimes you got to swear at these things to get them to work right. That's right. Sometimes you need you to throw a wrench through yes, a window. You got to throw, you got three. <laughs> oh, God, memories. What else is going on? A train derailment in Michigan is not, I repeat, not a pollution concern. Norfolk Southern Freight derailed in Metro Detroit on Thursday, according to officials. There is no environmental concern at the site. Of course, you had that. Uh, disaster that happened in ohio that was a mess so uh, another uh, another good reason to be in michigan and not ohio but uh yeah anytime these things happen because everybody's mind immediately goes to okay was this an intentional derailment it was somebody doing something and who the hell knows again right? it goes back to the you don't trust any information coming out of anywhere so uh, did you see again, we'll, we'll just did you see, see eight millimeter refresh my memory because i think the I kids that were making a movie back in the day on the eight millimeter film and the train wreck happened and it was a it was like saw it, no. it was like a lead into stranger things almost it okay. was okay yeah it was a steven spielberg thing if if you okay. want to see a great movie with max watch eight millimeter okay because there's a train wreck noted. in it and it's it's really gotcha. it's really worth watching okay noted mental Go. note made all right sports sparty takes on michigan eight o'clock tip off from chrysler on Saturday night, uh, it should be an interesting game. Obviously, it's the first game for Michigan State since the tragedy on Monday. Uh, they're uh, Michigan's going to be doing something cool. I guess they're lighting the Chrysler Center up green and they're oh, passing cool. out green wristbands. So it's it's a cool thing. It's one of those things. It's it's going to take the bite, the maybe the little bit of the bitterness out of the rivalry 
for uh, a couple of hours, but uh, should be uh, should be an interesting watch. That's Saturday night. That's sports. All right, unusual looking animals for two hundred bucks or twelve hundred bucks. Um, are you ready for this? Unusual looking animals. I, I can't remember what that. yesterday's was, but this ugly eel with a very long snout has two sets of jaws and teeth. It's ugly. So it's an eel. Is it an electric eel? Is that your answer? I'm going with that. I, it's a moray eel. Stop. A moray eel. Okay. No, I, I don't it. know. A moray electric. I, I don't. It, it sounded when I said it, it sounded wrong. Well, it happens. I, I, see, I, that's why I did not. I did not say it with confidence. Had I said it with more confidence, I think it would have somehow miraculously been correct. Well, but I, I said it with with a, with apprehension, and uh, if you're going to be wrong, try and be resolute in being right about your wrongness. Sage that advice is, from somebody in the fifties, right there. One hundred thousand views, Dave Cagley. Congratulations and thank you very much. We will talk to you on Monday. See ya. Happy Friday, Muskegon. Roads could be slick out there as you head out this morning, so just be aware of that. But we do have a pretty nice weekend in store, so let's look at your forecast brought to you by Trinity Health. Your Friday and weekend weather headlines show we will have flurries lasting into Friday, but we're not expecting accumulation throughout the day on Friday, thankfully. But we are expecting some slick roads this morning due to the snow that fell on Thursday. Now, this weekend does look to see some sunshine, especially during the afternoon hours with partly sunny skies expected until snow arrives once again Monday night. Now the biggest weather story at least through the weekend will be the daytime temperatures on Friday and also the impactful roads that we'll likely experience for Friday morning. So the temperatures at 7 a.m. on Friday as you head out to work or school will be in the middle teens so that will help to create ice on the roadway so just be aware of that as you head out. Now snowfall like I said we're not expecting much accumulation if any on Friday as a lake shore will likely just have a few flurries, especially north of Muskegon and south of Muskegon. But here in Muskegon County, we'll likely see a few flurries throughout the day. But like I said, we're not expecting any snow accumulation out of that. And we're also expecting colder temperatures today as temperatures will plummet into the upper 20s to mid 20s all across Muskegon County, which will keep some roads, especially icy, especially those side roads that don't get treated as much. So for your Friday, expect a high of 27 with some flurries. Otherwise, today will be cloudy until around sunset where we actually will start to break up the cloud cover as we become mostly clear overnight going into Saturday morning with a low of 20. And like I said, we're expecting some sunshine at least over the weekend with temperatures around 40 on either side of 40. Sunday will be the warmer day of the two. And then clouds will increase on Monday ahead of some snow showers Monday night going into Tuesday morning. And then we'll have another storm system arriving once again Wednesday into Thursday, bringing a wintry mix, possibly even a little bit of ice. And that's your Friday and weekend forecast brought to you by Trendy Health on the Muskegon Channel, Lime Cone Woods weather, and have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you again on Monday.